My name is Mike Robinson from Toronto, Canada. I am a teacher of 19th century photographic processes. I, my specialty is the daguerreotype. I've been working with the daguerreotype uh, for 20 years now. I got interested in daguerreotypy because of my passion for photography. When I was a student at, at Ryerson University in Toronto, I was using very large format, uh, 8 by 10 inch negative film, to, uh, contact printing and gelatin silver prints. And when I first was exposed to 19th century photography, uh, the albumin print, uh, Aceh photographs, I was amazed at the quality of the image. The sharpness, the tonal quality, the resolution, I felt was much better than what I could obtain with 20th century photographic materials. And so in my uh, last years of university, I taught myself the albumin printing process, and I was using modern film and developed a high contrast to work with albumin. And eventually I realized uh, it wasn't just the paper, it was the negative. And so I had to work with the wet collodion process to make the negatives from my albumin prints. And that led me further back in time. I made uh, wet plate negatives for a couple of years. But once you see a daguerreotype, there's really no process that can equal the beauty and the, the color and the resolution the magic of photography for me is the daguerreotype. I have contacts with just about all of them. Uh, it, experts is a relative term. Uh, I have uh, spent the last eight years studying the, the, the technique. Not only the advanced technique, but from the very early period. I just completed last week my PhD in the techniques and material aesthetics of the daguerreotype. So I've studied the process from its beginning through every iteration, every change, every advancement. So I have colleagues that make daguerreotypes, but most of them stick with one aspect, you know, the, the, the most advanced method. Yes, I've been working with the mercury for 20 years, and I have, I have had no effects. I've had uh, monitoring systems in my laboratory to indicate if there's any mercury. The thing to understand about mercury, that yes, mercury vapor is extremely dangerous. But the important thing you must understand is that you design apparatus that does not release mercury into the atmosphere. So my, my developing system is an adaptation of a 19th century mercury system, but it never, is never open to the atmosphere. And even so, that is still operating within a ventilation system. So it's, I've used uh, very little mercury is required to make a daguerreotype. I've used, uh, I have the same mercury I started with in my studio. I started with 25 milliliters of mercury and 10,000 daguerreotypes later, I still have 25 milliliters of mercury. Uh, you must be willing to fail 500 times. And, can, and persevere. The, the daguerreotype process, for me, I have done almost every photographic process, analog, and I have found that the daguerreotype process is still the most challenging. Uh, and the reason for that is you are creating your light-sensitive surface individually on a plate. And there are many variables that affect the formation of the light sensitive surface. Everything will affect it. The temperature of the room, the humidity levels. All of these things you have to take into account. So failure is the norm and success is rare until you get experience. I look for images that inspire me. Uh, the way the photographer has used the camera or the point of view. So I, I love daguerreotypes, there's no question about it. I love daguerreotypes, but you know, an image, a beautiful portrait or you know, beautiful use of lighting is inspiring. So I take, I, the one thing that's in, interesting, a 19th century daguerreotypist only had the daguerreotype. 
They, they only, you know, they did the portraits, they did what was commercial. Now in the 21st century, as a daguerreotypist, I have the entire history of photography to refer to as inspiration when I make my own work. Well, I'm just amazed at what has been accomplished in such a short period of time. I understand that this museum is not very old. Uh, I understand that uh, this entire collection has been assembled in just a few years. It's astonishing to me uh, at the way that uh, the curator has put together such an, a very, very high level, very professional presentation. Uh, I love the different rooms, the different aspects of it. It's, it's really well done.